Robot Turtles is not a game that I had heard about or had researched before I bought it. I simply saw it on the shelf of a store in town and not my friendly local game store. One of those big stores that you find in malls and that I'm not going to mention because they don't need my advertisement. So, I saw it there. Robot Turtles, the illustration on the cover looked pretty cute. It says here that it introduces basic coding concepts to preschoolers. I happen to have a daughter who is in preschool and another one in kindergarten. And I'm a big fan of introducing stuff to them through games of subliminally building up their skills and character, etc. Et 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 hey, it also turns out it's the most backboard game in Kickstarter history, so that seemed promising. Oh, whatever, what the heck. On the um, on a whim, I decided to purchase it and I gave it to my daughters for Christmas and we have been playing it quite a bit and yes, they have enjoyed it. Robot Turtles, the game for little programmers. Yes, it is a game about programming. Um, so if you're not planning to turn your children into programmers, so maybe at least you're introducing them. If not, to start that they will use as computer engineering engineers, they will use it in their career as gamers. So you introduce them to programming as a very well-known and respected game mechanic. The rulebook also uh, says that the game can be played by adults, there are rules to make the game a little more competitive and aggressive than it is in its basic configuration for children. But frankly, I, I don't see this game as, as one that really you will want to play with adults or that will be all that engaging if played in that fashion. At least I would say that there are just other very solid options for games with programming mechanics uh, for adults. If you want a brutal, highly competitive, aggressive um, racing game with a programming engine, then you have the classic Robo Rally. If you want a puzzle-oriented programming game, then you have Ricochet Robots. Uh, there even is a, com a cooperative, uh, co cooperative programming game, which I reviewed like, last week or two weeks ago, which is called Bomb Squad. So there are a lot of options for adults. Now we also have an option for children, even though one again that I believe really works for family and not necessarily for, uh, for gamers, experienced gamers, advanced gamers. You have here a main rule book which really describes many play variants. This is something that I like. The game is almost like a sandbox more than really a finished single game. There are just many different ways that the game can be played. And the rule book introduces them uh, little by little so that you yourself can introduce them gradually to your children. And in fact, you also have the quick starter rules and showing you the most basic way of playing the game, which is a single sheet of paper. But really, there are just a lot of interesting variants and it's really fun to introduce them one by one to your children. In the simplest variants, uh, uh, sim simplest one or two variants, um, not just my daughter Amelia, who's in kindergarten, but also my other daughter, Louisa, who is in preschool, uh, can play the game. They both can. More advanced versions, my kindergartner can enjoy it. The other daughter, not so much. Here's the board, which is not unpleasant, but pretty bland, uh, which has to be, because then there are many configurations that you can play. The board should not attract too much attention, uh, because so then it gives you more options of setting it up in different ways from game to game and depending on the game variant that you're using. Each player will have cards divided in several stacks. These stacks you divide them by type so you have several stacks in front of you face up as you play the game each player will also receive a bug token of the same color as their deck of cards. As you can see, uh, the cards are color coded. So that so they have a color indicating the function of the card, but there is also a general color indicating what the uh, indicating the belonging player. And then each player also will have a turtle which will be placed on the board 
the designated sorting space for that turtle is there. And each player also has a diamond of their color. So it's a complete set for each player. And the diamond will go somewhere on the board, meaning that, again, there are many ways the board can be set up. Just make sure that all players have the same chance of getting their own diamond at the same distance. The, the difficulty of reaching the diamond is the same from the starting point of all players. Uh, or, if you're playing with players with different levels of experience, then you can also decide to uh, set up things differently. So actually you will make it harder for some players to reach the diamond. For example, maybe I'm the adult, so I'm, I'm putting my diamond pretty far and my daughter will have a much easier time. Uh, that would be a pretty tough challenge. Anyways, in the simplest way possible to play the game, I choose a card from my car, from my from my stacks, I put it face up and I execute the program. If I want my turtle to move straight forward, I play this card. If I wanted to turn in that direction, like this, I play this other card. It's uh, it's really cool that these cards are coded. So you can see there's a yellow here, a yellow flower here, and a yellow flower here. It's a very easy visual reminder for children of what uh, the card does and the orientation that the turtle will have after you play the card. Rather than just this arrow here that may be confusing. Maybe I'm sitting here, the turtle is there. I look at the arrow, I get confused. I don't. Uh, that eye, it wasn't like an hypothetical like as a child, no, no, I, me, when I play Robo Rally, I always get confused between the orientation of the card and the orientation of my Robo, and I mess up. Here, I don't have that problem, I know that with this card, my Robo will turn the yellow way, and with this other card, uh, my Robo Turtle will turn the purple way, as indicated by the card. So in the pos in the, in the simplest way of playing the game, a child plays the card and executes the command. This one moves forward, this one you turn that way but you do not move, then maybe you'll do that again and then I play this other one and I turn this way and so on and so forth. Now I said you I play the card and I move the turtle. The rules make a big deal about the fact that you play the card, the, the child plays the card and the adult moves the turtle. The programmer that programs the turtle cannot touch the turtle. I'm not sure why, I guess the idea is like they really want to tell the child that the point is to give the instructions and then the machine performs that. Maybe there's a psychological advantage in putting a distance between your progr program as it is written and the execution. So, so you just the point it to be clear and then the machine does it. Maybe that's what it, they're aiming at. But frankly, my child really enjoy moving their own turtles. I don't think they would even... Huh, I wouldn't be able to get close to their turtles. They will definitely want to doing it as they as they have been doing. That's how I, we have been playing it, that you move your own turtle. If you made a mistake, you have also this bug token, you keep it by your player and you say bug, and you can annul the last card that you played. So again, the pos simplest possible way, I play a card, I move, you play a card, you move, and the first player that gets there wins. If you want to play that way, or simply complete their mission, yeah, if you want to play that way. You can also play completely non-competitive. You get there, everybody cheers and celebrates, and then you sit there with the other players, and you wait until everybody got their diamond, and everybody celebrates, and everybody's happy. Why are these turtles so attracted to diamonds? I don't know. Don't ask. Now, a slightly more complex and interesting way is to play with three cards at a time. So, simply when it is your turn, you put down three cards, then you execute the entire program, and then it's another player's turn. It's basic for you, but for a five-year-old it's a really interesting challenge. And My daughter, uh, Amelia, had a little bit of a hard time at the beginning, uh, but she really enjoys it now. She really enjoys the challenge of having to plan ahead a little bit. Then once your children understand the basic concepts uh, and they're playing with one or three cards, you start adding terrain tiles to make things more interesting. This thing is impassable, so simply their turtle will have to move 
to move around it and uh, well you may think things are complicated more or less complicated as you want there are several scenarios uh, described in the book but you can make things the way you want uh, forcing your child to go around things the terrain tile that my daughters enjoy the most, however, is not this one, which simply there's nothing you can do about it, you have to move around it. The one that they really like is this one, is the Ice Tower. Because there's a specific card, which is this one, when you play it, your turtle shoots a laser that uh, moves from the turtle and goes forward in the direction that the turtle is facing and pshh, melts down a, a nice tower and turns it into this nice pool of water and since turtles are not afraid of water even if they're carrying laser guns on their back then you simply can move into that spot so in this case i could do for example this this and this then I do forward, turn the yellow way, and bzz, bazinga, zap, and I'm ready to move into it next time. There's one of the terrain tile, which is this one, and it's simply something that does not affect your movement because if you move forward into it you simply push it you push the crates the only limitation is that uh, for you to do so it cannot have anything behind it so if this is the situation i have no problem with a simple straightforward straight move i got there but then i wouldn't be able to go past that so you have to play in advance a little bit especially if there are other tools around and you cannot move it onto them you could use it in some cases, I guess, to do nasty stuff and block paths to the opponents. But we don't play it that way because I play with children. So you can see you have a lot of play variants. Uh, the most complex card that I haven't introduced to my daughters yet. And you will need to be careful because you really take some advanced little programmers to use it is the function card. With the function card, uh, before the game starts, uh, each player can program a mini program for the turtles based on the function card. For example, I program something like this. What this does, and I'll put it in my play here, it simply means that during the game, anytime I play a function card, it means these things. My turtle will automatically execute these things. So there's a huge advantage if you're playing even just a card at a time, then I execute four moves when I'm playing that function, because then that when I play that function, the single card allows me to go forward, turn, go forward, turn excellent to move around this is a classic function excellent to move around obstacles so if you're playing in any version one card at a time three cards at a time this is very uh, good card again it needs to be played with advanced um, players uh, there's also another variant of the game in which simply players stare at the board uh, and they write their program and then you see who is the first player that is able to write a program and even several players have written several programs the player with the shortest program gets to win that's a competitive version of the game um, and so function cards are really important to be able uh, to get there first if you're playing a time-based game or to win with a shorter program if you're playing a game based on the quality and length and efficiency of the program so robot turtle uh robot turtles my daughters have enjoyed it uh, it's not the biggest hit in terms of board games it's not like their favorite board game ever they enjoyed it they've enjoyed it I have to say, there is something logistically about it that it takes you quite a bit to set up the game and they get all excited, we put this here, this there. Setting up the game is uh, three quarters, well, half of the fun and three quarters of the time because once you set up the game, then actually playing it is really fast. Uh, oh, you set up the diamonds really, really far, but then you have the, the opposite danger, which is what if the game uh, overstays its welcome. Uh, the gameplay with the turtles in the corners and the diamonds more or less in the, in the middle, they're exciting when you're setting it up and you imagine all the crazy stuff, they're over pretty quickly. And again, the problem is that but if you put them uh, the diamond on the opposite side, then it can get with a lot of convolutions, it can get a little tiresome 
for the little player so it's hard to kind of like find a balance for really the the right length that makes us setting up the game with all these terrain tiles uh, worth and at the same time really keeps the attention up for the little ones it's a small thing really because um, when we did play the game uh, we did enjoy it it's just that it was over a little too soon or a little too late um, but that's really is a minor thing my daughters enjoyed learning the various phases of the game I said even my three-year-old uh, can play this game, my five-year-old enjoys it much more because she can see many more options. Uh, it's, it is almost, it seems strange, but an RPG quality, definitely making the funny noises uh, of, the, of the turtle, the giving the onomatopoeics to the story with the laser zapping and the turtle swimming in the pool of cold water. Uh, it's it's a zany theme, but it's fun, and it's really funny for the for the children to see the theme, to implement the theme, to bring it to life with funny noises. And you, as an adult, of course, you will want to encourage that. For that reason, again, um, I prefer to play it so in our own variant, uh, in which uh, the children get to move their own turtles, uh, because that creates just an emotional investment that children really, really like, and I would almost say need, really, to be able to interest it in the game for, for, the, for the amount of time that it takes to play it, and for them to put in the amount of energy that also it requires to, uh, to be able to play the game. It's fun. Um, the fact that uh, it's not exactly competitive and not exactly cooperative also um, makes it a little less exciting than it otherwise could. But the components are nice. My others like to look at the components, to play the components. They like to set up the game. They like to play their turtles with the turtles and plan their moves. So basically, they like to do anything and everything that the game uh, requires and they like the way the game looks and feels, they like the thing, they like everything. There are just a couple of minor quibbles that I have here and there, uh, which to me are probably part of the reason why the game has been appreciated, but not one of their favorite games they have asked me to play, but hasn't been uh, one of the biggest hits. There are just other games that they, they found much more... Um, uh, much more exciting from the beginning and they were drawn in much more maybe they went there a little bit later then they'll start we'll start playing the game in a little more of a of a competitive way we start using functions to become even more intellectually engaging but again i think as soon as as soon as they get around 10 or 11 they will want to play more complex games um so I don't see this as a game that you start playing as a child and then you can play for the rest of your life, say like King of Tokyo, uh, but as a game that, uh, that, um, that fits a need or at least uh, can give a hand to players in a specific, um, to parents and parents in a specific period of their children's lives. Again, when they're on three or four or five until maybe they're eight, eight nine or ten, but probably not much past that. It's good game not a phenomenal one uh it's a, it's a good it's good it's good that's you know not excellent not bad by any means uh it's a good fun game